Hey guys, today I'm going to be making the Bananas Foster Upside Down Coffee Cake. This one is in the Southern Living Magazine and it was the September 2006 edition or version or whatever of the magazine. So I'm going to go through the ingredients first and then I'll go through how to make it. So the first thing we need is we need a half a cup of butter and it's divided into, into fourth cups. We need two tablespoons of rum and that's the brand we used. You need one cup of firmly packed light brown sugar, half cup chopped pecans and toast them. You need to put them in a, in a pan and toast them really quick. Don't burn them. Um, you need two medium sized ripe bananas. They're cut in half and then cut in half again. And I just left the other bananas there so you can see what a banana looks like. Um, you need uh, seven maraschino cherries, six of them cut in half, one whole. You need three fourths cup of granulated sugar, divided into half cup and fourth cups. You need two large eggs separated into yolks and whites. You need three fourths cup of milk, half cup of sour cream, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of a, of a baking mix of some kind. We use the Bisquick, but if you have another baking mix you want to use, you're more than welcome to. And then a fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon. So this is made in a cast iron skillet and I'm going to show you the cast iron skillet we have. This is our old cast iron skillet. It's, it's no telling how old it is. I sprayed the sides of it a little bit. Um, our stove is not, you're not supposed to put cast iron, um, especially the old ones, on the stove because it can scratch them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt a fourth of a cup of the butter in just a regular skillet that we have, just a regular pan. I'm going to melt half of that stick in this half of the stick in a pan. Once it's melted, I'm going to pour the rum in there, stir it up, and then I'm going to pour that in my cast iron skillet, but then I'll be back to show you that stuff. Okay, I literally just used the same pan that I toasted my walnuts in, I mean the pecans in, and uh, just uh, wiped it out with a paper towel. So if you see any little brown bits in there, that's what that is. So I'm going to, my butter's good and melted, it's good and hot, so I'm going to add my rum. And I'm going to take it, since like I said, I can't use my cast iron skillet on my that's why I got on the paper or the uh, dish towel. I'm going to take this and move it. Everything would have been removed from the heat anyway. So I'm going to pour this in here. I'm going to sprinkle brown sugar over the butter. I'm just going to do it by hand. Take your pecans and sprinkle those over top of this. All right, so now take your bananas and we're going to put them in like a spoke pattern. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the pointy side in. these and you notice I'm going to put these the flat side up so when you flip it over it's going to be the round side up, uh, will be up when you flip it. You want one right, the big one right in the middle. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, that's gonna set for just a second until I get done with the inside. So you're gonna take your uh, fourth cup of softened butter and your half cup of sugar. And you're gonna cream this together using your mixer. So here's my, uh, my butter and my sugar. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna add the yolks, the egg yolks one at a time until they're just blended. You really don't want it to, to go uh, forever and over mix them. So next I'm gonna add my milk. Now I'm gonna add my sour cream. things going to be added to this is I'm going to 
put my cinnamon in here. And I'm gonna work my flour into it. And I've just got a spoon so I can put a little bit at a time. This is all mixed up. I've just scraped down my sides and taken the, the beater off just so you wouldn't have to watch the pain of doing that. Um, so now I've got another bowl I'm gonna put on here and we're going to basically make like, um, like a whipped cream. If you have a hand mixer, you can use a hand mixer as well. So take your two egg whites and you're gonna whip it until it makes soft peaks. And then we'll gradually add in our sugar um, after it's gotten the soft peaks. So now I've got that. Now I'm going to gently add my, or gently, slowly add my sugar to this. All right, so now basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and fold it into um, the other mixture. Now you're basically gonna, gonna take this and pour it over your mixture. Let me pull it over a little closer. It's gonna bake on a three, uh, 350 degree oven for 45 to 50 minutes. We'll probably do like 47 or so. And uh, then you're gonna, but it should be done when a wooden toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. So we'll join you when that comes out. We left this in the oven for 45, 47 minutes. And then uh, uh, Kevin told me to take this out and make sure that a toothpick came out clean. I inserted the toothpick, it did not come out clean. It was still uh, damp in the middle. So I put it back in the oven and I left it the full 50 minutes. Um, so the next time I took it out, it came out completely dry, the toothpick did. So now what you wanna do is set a timer for 10 minutes, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then we are going to turn this over onto a plate. Okay, Kevin is in a meeting, but it's been 10 minutes, so I'm going to flip this out on a plate for him so that we can do it in a timely manner like we're supposed to. So I'm just gonna take this and just flip it very quickly and hopefully it will come out like it's supposed to. Oh yeah, so it's stuck a little bit on that side over there. Just gonna pull it up. So it did stick a little bit around the edge, so I would grease my pan uh, really well. But other than that, it looks really pretty, so I'll show you a close-up. So this is how it looks close-up. It is a beautiful dessert. Very, very beautiful. Uh, very pretty, very, the cherries make it very striking. So I'm going to cut us a piece and we'll give it a try. So this is the magazine. This is the September 2006 edition of Southern Living, and I will show you how theirs looks. Theirs, I'm gonna tell you, Kevin's is thicker. Uh, theirs is- My pan is quite smaller. Theirs is uh, thinner. Uh, what size pan did it say you use? Because we, we used a 10 inch pan. Well, it says 10. I don't know if that's I mean the size or some kind of how the uh, iron is. Yeah, we used, ours has a number 10 on the bottom of our yeah. pan. Of course, that may be the size that might be the type of iron it's using. Right. Uh, Kevin was in a meeting when I had to take this out. 
So, and then I had to wait 10 minutes and you're supposed to flip it over. And so Kevin was still in his meeting. So I had to go ahead and do it. He told me that I should have taken a, like a butter knife and gone around the edge mm -hmm. before I flipped it over. It didn't tell me to do that in the direction. So I didn't know. So it would not have stuck for you all if you do it. It won't stick for you. I should have known to do that and I just didn't. So. But yours is, uh, it's thick and. Um, uh, it's thicker, but I'm sure it's because of the pan size. Because I'm thinking that a 10 on a cast iron skillet is not the same thing as a 10 inch. <laughs> I think it's something else. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a piece of banana, but I got the banana flavor. I did. Oh, if you taste the banana, you got a banana. They're mm -hmm. very, very soft. Mm-hmm. That's good. I got a piece that was like all right on the edge. Mm-hmm. Um, that is delicious. It's very, very good. You like that banana? Mm-hmm. Because I know Kevin doesn't like like overripe bananas. No, that's just a soft banana, but it doesn't have that brown banana flavor. Yes. And what do you think about the uh, the like the caramely sugar on top? I think it's very very sweet. And but just mixed in with that banana, it just um, it it's so sweet. Mm -hmm. It's good. Sorry, I was just taking a bite when you said that. Um, you get the crunch, the, the graininess of the brown sugar because you don't really melt the brown sugar; you just kind of put it in there, um, which I like. I'm surprised it doesn't have as much like caramely runoff as some like uh, mm -hmm. some things do, but it's good. I actually like it that it didn't have a lot of that runoff because it soaked in some, and it really cooked that banana well. I really like the soft banana. I was gonna say banana. You that's could, really good. You could make your own juice out of um, drizzle it over or something. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't know that you need it. It would be so sweet. Brown sugar and butter. Yeah, it, you do not need mm -hmm. that at all. Though. Pecans are good. The pecans, the pecans mm -hmm. is what I actually noticed with the brown sugar. When you get a pecan, mm -hmm. it has brown sugar like stuck to it. Yes. It's good. I think, it, I think it's quite good. I think it's absolutely delicious. Do you the, think it was easy to follow? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. The cake itself, did you try just a piece of the cake? It's not bad. It's kind of bland. It's kind of plain. No, but you know what? If the cake were by itself, it would be good with just butter. Yeah, almost like a, a, a yellow cornmeal or something. Yeah, it's like a banana bread without the banana. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, of the, yeah. the texture and everything. It's just like banana bread without banana. Mm -hmm. And so that would go well with just uh, warm bread and butter. It would be really, really good. Of course, the way this is laid out, you probably would never eat just the cake by itself. You're always going to be cutting down oh, yes. through it. So you're always going to get a little topping with it no matter yes. what. So you'll get that sweetness. No, I, I like it. So do you... And I don't think it was hard, really. It's just... And that's what I was going to say. Is, what do you think it was hard? If you're allowed to cook on your stove with a, with an iron skillet, like if you have a gas stove or if you have an electric stove that you can put an iron skillet on, um, just the kind we have is those quartz top and you're not supposed to put it on there because it'll scratch it. That's the only reason. Um, they make iron skillets now that you can use on those types of top, but the, the bottom's smooth. Right. We've got one. Our iron skillet's probably from it's all, the 50s. Yeah. You know? so, it's um, an original. It's, an original. <laughs> it's from the pioneer day. Um, it's, um, I'm sure it says made in China, honestly. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's old, so it's not made for these kind of stove tops. So if you have one, you could have done it all in the stove, on the stove top. And it wouldn't have taken two pans. That's the only, really the hard part was getting the two pans and kind of dealing with it. But it, they, even that wasn't hard. Right. So that's good for you all to know that if you do have a stove like ours and you have recipes that call for an iron skillet, you can work around it. Yeah. You can work around it. You can still make any recipe. You just might have to uh, do it a little bit differently than they yeah, tell maybe you Maybe two steps instead of one. But it still works out the yeah. same. Take everything that you were going to cook in the iron skillet on your stove top and just right. cook it in a different pan and put it into and the then just put it in there yeah, yeah so and do you think that uh you could make this same dessert in a bunt pan instead of an iron skillet no but you probably could no. have done it in some kind of casserole pan okay like you did a round casserole why pan don't you think time. it would have worked in a bunt pan bunt pans are shaped funny right and so, so you're not you gonna think get with your, the pecans and yeah, all that it but it, been... nothing's gonna you're not gonna have it setting in all okay. the juice so if, the you pan's don't, only this wide. if you don't own an iron skillet, what kind of pan would you put this I'd in? I'd get some kind of metal casserole dish. 
uh, like uh, a cake pan or a lasagna pan um or that might work it's not metal but so you it might take work. A, a metal cake pan a pan and then just turn it out from the i pan. think that would work because that's how you make pineapple that's how my mom always made pineapple upside down cake was in a was regular in a pan, a cake metal pan. cake pan yeah okay so okay. so i think that would work for this too it just wouldn't be round and fancy it would just you'd have to put your bananas like like flat you know straight up and down right we should have been a circle. Right. And of course, they're telling you you can uh, serve it with whipped cream if you want. Could be good or ice cream. Yeah, ice cream. 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 Yeah, of course, there's always ways to add a calories yeah. to it, okay. <laughs> but it'll make it better. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching.